Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. And welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I was thoroughly creeped out by Trelawney in this episode. Ooh. Oh, in this chapter, rather. Sorry, chapter. I've been doing too much TV work. I know, I know. Gotta get back into the book lingo. Especially, you know, coming from seeing the movies, and, you know, you get to see her, the Dark Lord, yeah. you know, with her creepy face that Emma, Emma does. So, I just, she is, she's creepy in this episode, man. Yes. Just, uh, no, chapter. Chap- <laughs> no, I even got you doing it. That a girl. We'll get there. We'll get there someday. It's not like we've been podcasting for years. We've got this. Oh, so, of course, we are here, and we are at chapter 16, 16. Professor Trelawney's Prediction. Yes. And um, Do I have to kill some time while you find your quote? <laughs> I will do this one. Okay, good. Indeed whispered Professor Trelawney, scribbling keenly on the parchment perched upon her knees. My boy, you may well be seeing the outcome of poor Hagrid's trouble with the Ministry of Magic. Look closer. Does the hippogriff appear to have its head? (laughs) (laughs) And of course, those of us, you know, spoiler alert, we all know, yes, yes, Buckbeak does have his head. So in, in effect... Harry actually makes a prediction. Yes, he does. From this orb, which is really, really darn cool. Of course, you know, when it comes to um, telling the future and having the (laughs) inner eye, Harry doesn't really talk about that kind of stuff. But good job, Harry. Right, right. That a boy. I mean, even even in his own world, he refuses to let Buckbeak die. He that Buckbeak is gonna get saved. Yes, that is it. No matter what anybody says. I love how Harry just has no room for failure when it comes to that. Now, the quote that I think you would have wanted me to say by Professor Trelawney was, sure. The Dark Lord lies alone and friendless, abandoned by his followers. His servant has been chained these 12 years. Tonight, before midnight, the servant will break free and set out to rejoin his master. The Dark Lord will rise again with his servant's aid, greater and more terrible than ever before. Tonight, before midnight, the servant will set out to rejoin his master. Ah, very good choice if that was the choice that you actually made, Mary. <laughs> Such a doubter. Such a doubter. Oh, All right, boy. well. Uh, before we get into the rest of this episode, we want to thank all of our friends at the jointhenerdclan.com. You have made this possible. You have made the Potterverse possible. You've made OutlanderCast possible. You've made all of our podcasts, Bridgerton, all of them the possible. The MCU Diaries. Yes. All of Seriously, them. because of listener support, I know many of you love Downton Abbey and you've watched PBS shows. Mm-hmm. You know how they're always like, this show is thanks to listener support by viewers like you. This podcast is honestly thanks. Thanks to listeners like you. <laughs> Those of you who have decided for as little as $2 a month to become a member at jointhenerdclan.com, you guys know you get all sorts of perks, bonus podcast episodes. You get uh, Blake's book club, Mary's book club. Free we're recovering. Swag. Oh, yeah. Tons of great things. Oh, yeah. So if you're not yet there and if our podcast brings you Lumos in the time of Knox, head on over. Jointhenerdclan.com. We're actually going to be doing... Um, some pretty cool things coming up really soon. We're super close to 800 members. Yeah, we're j- like we're just uh, I think we're 3 members away. And I think that we're going to have three special things for Th- Whoa. Yes. Yes. Whoa. Have you already like said something? Well, one of them is if we hit 800, uh-huh. we're going to do a minute with Mar- Mary tutorial. Okay. But it, I'm going to be the model. Okay. And it will be live. It'll be live. It'll, it'll be, be a whole live. tutorial and everything and I'll be the model. But it'll only be for members at jointhenerdclan.com to see. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Good. Because, hey, they're the supporters, yep. right? I, I agree. I get so it. Blake will have a makeover by me. Oh, my God. <gasps> I can't wait. Can I... Th- um. <laughs> do something to your eyebrows? 
I'm not threading my eyebrows. Okay, we may have to shave so I can contour the hell out of those cheekbones. Okay, so we've got that going on. Did, was there a number I'm two not, that you I, wanted? I'm not going to shave. Okay. I, I, I did that already, and it's a mess. Okay. I don't like shaving. Uh, the second thing will be that we will have a live virtual viewing of a movie or show of viewer choice. Oh. But it will be like over this app called Cat. It's like a cast app. So we can all be chatting and viewing it together. It'll be like a whole fun virtual experience synced together. Okay. Okay. So we're going to like watch something and hang out together. And Are then, we going to give choices of yeah. what we're going to watch? Yeah. And then they get to vote. Okay. Join the nerdclan.com members get to vote. Okay. And then the third one okay. is going to be that we're going to have a Zoom for our friends that join the Nerd Clan at a certain date and time. And we are literally just going to like hang on out and chat. Okay. Like voices, video, hang on out, Nerd Clan members. So you will get makeover for Blake, movie night, and hangout time. If that's if, if we, we get to eight hundred members, if we hit eight hundred, yes, and okay. it will only be available for the eight hundred members at jointhenerdclan.com. Okay. Caitlin says the sound of music. Absolutely not. Yes, let's all make <laughs> no. Blake watch no, it. No, God, please, no, no. <laughs> nope, that's right, Michael. No. Not doing it, Michael. <laughs> all right, let's get into the show. Enough of the nerd clan. Let's get into the show. All right, let's do it. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Hey, Blake, here we are. Yeah, here we are. So where do you want to begin with this chapter? Because I would say that I... Well, do you want to give it a little synopsis? Uh, yes, please. Okay, Go ahead. so basically it's test taking time. Y'all remember what it was like in high school where you had like half days that were literally just a test and then maybe you got to go home and have lunch or maybe you had another test after lunch. That's what it's like if you're taking OWLs or NEWTs. Huh, watch out. Buckbeak. OWLs. Hang on to you. Oh, yeah, that's what I said, right? Booby trap. OWLs. OWLs or N E W T S. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. How to tell when the hosts aren't listening. Okay, like, I gave it to myself. I, I know, I know. I You're, thought you said OWTs. It's okay. You're just basic <laughs> powder knowledge at this point. You don't know. What what is the you N- do not N-E-W-T's know? NEWTs but- stand for. Oh my god, it's that one was really, really hard. That one that one was really hard. Yeah, okay? okay. See, I know it. I remember reading and I was like, Ugh, the end. It's the end. Nastil- nastily, nastily exhausting wizarding test. Yes. So you're welcome. Nastily. Because I'm amazing. Nastily is like not a word ever used. Nastily. Uh, that's, 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 that's used. Nastily? He said it nastily to me. No, nobody ever said that. I think nobody everybody says, says that. that. Nope. I think okay, you're, you're the only trouble. person who doesn't say it. Buckbeak is in trouble. Buckbeak Hold on it. tight. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on tight. Trelawney loses it, man. She's like, Dark Lord's getting his bestie back. He's bringing bestie back. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then, oh, man, guess what? What? The kids go to, like, try to check it on Hagrid. Who do they find? Scabbers. Scabbers. Watch out. Scabbers Things are going down. Mess. Things are going. D- so much stuff happens. We're, we're getting we're getting close. We're, we're beginning the end of the book here. I mean, the, this is this is where it's starting to begin. Our final. Start at the very beginning. Oh the very god! No god! Please, I know, Michael. No, I'm not going to no. do it. Okay, Blake. No. So here do we it, are. Michael. It's it's no. the end of school. They're taking the tests. Blake. Larson. Yes. What was the hardest test? Like, what was the worst test taking experience that you had in your youth, your younger years? Younger year, like Cassie so, on Instagram says she uses nastily all the time. See, told you. Okay, you know what I'm going to start doing? What using the word nastily? You know what word I have been using? What's that? Stippling. Stippling. Yes. And what was, is stippling? Oh my God, you're an artist and you don't know what stippling is either. Like I stippling so, like... Yeah, so I was talking about it in regards okay. to makeup application, right, gotcha. how you need to stipple with the brush. Yes. And our, our dear friend Ashley was like, I don't even know what that word is. Okay. And I said, I watch way too much Bob Ross because <laughs> I use the word stipple, which rhymes with nipple, but like I just use it. Sure. But I don't use nastily, but now I'm going to change. Use nipples too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've even, got nipples, even. Fokker. Okay. You wanna, can you milk me? Okay. <laughs> anyway, hopefully those of you who have seen the movie that he's talking about, he did not swear, I promise. I promise. It's just someone's last name. Blake, what was the worst test that you ever had to take? Uh, worst test I ever... Uh, so you're saying young is. Can, d- d- can this include college? Sure. All right. Uh, well, I mean, f- it's just not as fun. Well, but sure. Well, it is kind of fun. 
it was it was my modern well <sighs> sure I'll it do was it. my it was my history of Japan test okay yeah that was very difficult because it essentially included uh, the unification of Japan from the 1500s all the way to World War II in 1945. That is quite a history. So it, lots of Oda Nobunaga and the emperor and it just the Russo-Japanese war. Like there is like a kabillion things that I had to know. Mm-hmm. And that was in a lot of different names. Like you you think like the American names from the civil, uh, from the Revolutionary War are hard? Are hard? Try try talking about the unification of Japan. <laughs> that was a hard test. Man, oh man. Yeah, how about you? What's the um, hardest First, test? I need to give a shout out. We've got live. We've got your sister, Sissy, tuning in. Sissy, who has been sick with COVID and pneumonia. So oh, friends who are watching gracious. live on Facebook, can you send Sissy some love, yes. some heart emojis? Give, give my sister some love. She needs it. She's a Hufflepuff. Uh, I would say so. I, th- I I think you are. Sissy, if you're watching, have you taken a Harry Potter test? Because my money is on you being a sweet, sweet Hufflepuff. The, the problem is, sis, if that you're a Hufflepuff. Just no, ignore your brother. Nobody cares. Just ignore your brother. Um, so the cares. hardest test that I ever took, I will, t- I will do two. I will do two, okay. and they will be in college. One of them was hard. One of them I felt very bad taking. You, 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 get, you busted my balls for a college test. No, I'm saying if, you, if you're opening up college, sure, I'll do it. I mean, high school ones I hated because they just took so long. Yeah. I was bored. Well, like I'll say like a trig test was, was, was really hard. I hated trigonometry. It was the worst. Okay, mine, history of music, Gregorian chants. Oh, okay. They all sound the same. You know, I had to learn about Gregorian chants as well. I did. I bet. In my in my humanities class. I had to literally like listen to these things and be like, oh, I know what that one is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's so different from this other one. So hard. So, so hard. Um, and then the other one that I felt the, the worst about was my oboe test. <laughs> Is that the so mal, I, is that my, the the mal, uh, what's it called the, the malnourished mal- clarinet? Yes. Um, <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I, I my degree I have a bachelor of music. I studied for music education, uh, which I I was a music teacher for many many years. Probably go be a music teacher again at some point in the future. Um, but you have to take classes to learn how to play every single instrument. And so uh, in the oboe test, I nailed it. And because I nailed it, my friends who didn't nail it had me take their test for them. Oh. And so I felt so bad as a Gryffindor because I'm like, I can't cheat. I can't cheat, but I felt so bad because I didn't want my friends to fail. And the oboe teacher was so mean that she would have failed them and they would have like really flunked the whole Woodwinds class if they didn't nail the oboe test. And the oboe test was just an audio test that you would record. Oh. So I just sat in the room and did the test for four of my friends. Wait, so you recorded the same But I changed- Yes, but I changed the intonation a little bit so it would sound like a different oh, person okay. and I All would right. mess up a little bit, especially for the percussionist who I know wouldn't <laughs> actually be able to have the proper embouchure. And and for those of you, for those 30 of you that watched Mozart in the Jungle, you get my malnourished clarinet <laughs> reference. <laughs> such a good show. Go watch Ma- Mozart in the Jungle on Amazon. It is spectacular. All Loved right. it. Here we go. Chapter. Right. So I feel like in this chapter, not a whole ton happens except for the big thing that happens. Buddy, this chapter is so jam packed. Well, I mean, yeah, we have Scab is at the end freaking out. And then we, we have, have Trelawney making one of the I, two. I'm saying that's the big thing. Like nothing really happens except the big thing. And Scabbers. And Buck Beats about to be beheaded. Yeah. It ends with a swoosh of the We're axe. spending so much time with the tests and going into potions and then doing the the magical things okay. and then we got They the, are at school. I okay. I know. I know. I'm just saying like it's just a lot. It, it's a lot of just stuff and until all of a sudden all of a sudden it's not just stuff anymore. It's a thing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I do. I do. <laughs> You know what these tests made me think of? All the standardized tests yes. that kids have to do nowadays. Yep. We didn't have to do that stuff, I don't think, growing up. That's been like a more millennial, like what do you mean? younger millennial thing. The standardized tests that kids have oh, to yeah, do no, in like we didn't third do any grade of that crap. or fifth grade or anything like nope. that. The only standardized test I ever took was SATs. That's it. And I was not good at it. Oh my God. I did it with <laughs> mono. or No, I think I had the flu. 
I had something. I was I was super. Did you sick. fall asleep? Yeah, I would just like finish the part of the test, and then it says stop. You can't move on anymore, and you're supposed to go double check your answers. But your initial thought is generally correct, guys. It's generally correct. Don't go back and switch your answers. Fill in the blank ones. Don't switch anything. So I didn't have any blank answers, so I would just fall asleep. Oh my! Until God. the teacher said, "Okay, you can move on to this the next girl." Step. Fell asleep and multiple she times. Did, my still did better than me. Here I am sweating bullets. Thanks to knowledge of words like stippling. <laughs> just. I'm choosing. <laughs> Do you ever see the movie Back to Not Back to School? Uh, oh God, what was um, Summer Vacation? Not Summer Vacation. I don't. Nonetheless, it exams don't scare me. Don't just go and see, 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 see. I think that exams was are great because it's like if you don't know it, why freak out, man? Why freak out? <laughs> Okay? Just don't worry about it. And this is why, you know, Hermione, everybody's freaking out. Everybody is so nervous about these exams. The, I do feel bad for Hermione because she, once again, is taking all these exams at once. And we know why it's the time turner. Once again, she should have had time allotment made so that she could have naps. Or maybe she could just have an extra week of studying. Did she get equivalent extra time to study for these exams? Or was she expected to study for all these exams just within her normal allotted time? I don't know. Summer School. That's the name of the movie I was trying to think of. The mo- it's, mo- it's starring Ma Common. And the kid at the, end of the te- at the end of the test doesn't know what to do. He's just sitting doing all I didn't all watch C's. the movie. Oh, it's great. Great movie. It dude. generally is C. For all you nerds out there, <laughs> go watch uh, Summer School. It's the best. Oh, guess what? What? There was a question about cheering charms on the exam. Yes, Hermione was right, man. She was right. Um, cool things happen with... With uh, Lupin's class, he pretty much has like oh, the dude, Ninja Hermione. Warrior version of of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Defense right. Against the Dark Arts, Ninja Warrior. You need to go through all these different things. A hinky pop. You got to get through everything, and then you end up in a box with a bog art. Yeah, exactly. But you know the the thing is, in uh, contrast, again, we're using the teachers to contrast each other, especially. Uh, Lupin and Snape. Snape does these tests in order to specifically not hurt the kids, but like do something that they're not good at. Whereas Lupin does the opposite. He gives the kids something that they've already learned, they already know well, and that puts them in a position to succeed. Mm -hmm. All of them except Hermione. (laughs) Because poor Hermione just freaks out when she sees McGonagall as the boggart. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 especially in this chapter when she refuses to tell the boys that she has the time turner, mm-hmm. you eventually, when you look back on it and you see what Hermione's greatest fear is right at this moment, is McGonagall telling her that she's failed everything. It's not because she's failed her tests or quizzes, but because she's failed her as a person. She's failed her in the time turner aspect I think Lupin failed her as a teacher because everyone in the class got to practice with a bug art except Hermione. Uh, yes. It'd be like taking a test in math, but you didn't learn, like, the thing that you're being tested on, the method. She didn't get to actually put it into practice like every other kid did. So, of course, she's going to have a bad reaction. Yeah, what else? She knows the spell, but she never got to try it out. So I do feel a little bit badly. Yep. Then we get to divination. And Trelawney finally gives a real prediction. Finally. I mean, she I has mean, she made did have one before. before. I, I agree. She's made she's one before. She's had her moments. She made a big one. She got, she, I'm not saying the Super Bowl of predictions, but it's pretty close. And then this one's also pretty dang close, too. Yeah. Oh, you know, someone told me that the slideshow is not going. You're right. Thank you, Thank you Lily. I appreciate that. Thank you. Pavardi Patil. <laughs> Lily says, I know how annoyed you get when it doesn't move. <laughs> it is very true. This is our listeners knowing us full well. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot to put it back on. Uh, Pavardi Patil. Yep. Nails it. Nails it for yep. her for her class. Kind of gives me hope for Pavardi. Like, what does she grow up to be? Does she become a fortune teller herself? Uh, it's not, not that I want to like poo poo the art. Obviously, it has some legitimacy to it. Uh, you know, it's just funny because like the whole thing with divination is hard for me to accept. Like, I always found it. I used to get annoyed in art class because art is just an interpretation. I mean, it 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 it's an interp it's an interpretation of whatever you see and how you do it. 
So how can an art teacher give you a grade based on what you're interpreting? And I think the same thing applies for divination. You're just interpreting stuff. And it's all up to, it's all in the eye of the beholder. That's exactly what I said to my English teacher. No, English is different. English is different. There, There are like tangible things that you can and cannot grade. I disagreed. <laughs> well, you're the, also the one that said Animal Farm just was Animal Farm for the no. sake of... Oh, no. no uh, Lord, Lord, of the Lord, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies was just a book it's about boys that didn't get along. <laughs> has no deep meaning. Whatsoever. Okay, Marvin. Picked the wrong fight with that one. It's F. okay. <laughs> so after all this, after Harry goes and has a situation with Trelawney where she tells him, okay, the, the servant and the master, they're being reunited tonight. Um... Harry leaves, and he's like, that was messed up. That was super messed up. Yeah. And the kids find out about Buckbeak. Oh, hold on. I got to I gotta read the uh, the uh, the thing here, because... What thing? The the The, the prediction the that I already prediction. read in the beginning? Well, oh, yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It's okay. I won't, I won't How read it. How to tell her when hosts No, I was listening to it. <laughs> Fine, I'll play it again. How to tell when the hosts <laughs> But if you want to delve listening. into how this maybe made Harry feel, or... What it would have meant to you if this was a new time reading this? Here's another question. What if, and it calls into question the the significance and the probability of the prediction happening at the exact right time, at the exact right moment, in front of the exact right person. It's just so... Like, what brings on this prediction? Like, what happens if she makes this prediction in front of Pavati? She could have. That's what I'm saying, right? So, like, isn't it just, hey, isn't it just it's coincidental? No, man, it's magic. Get with it. No, it's I don't want to hear it's story. magic. I mean, it, listen, there is DNA to say, yes, the only, it's magic. It's just a magical story. There is DNA there. But, like, you when know people in Outland, when I give them a hard time for how things go, it just it, it just happens for the sake of happening. Their 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 answer is well, it's magic. It's just Jamie and Claire, and their love spans the ages. And so, it's like, no. So just deal with it, Blake. That it's will be our called, answer all the time. It's just magic. called hashtag hashtag plot problems. Anyway, what I loved, <laughs> I loved this particular line tonight before midnight. The servant will break free and set out to rejoin his master. The servant, his servant, has been chained. These 12 years. Yeah. So I really loved that because the change, you know, you're thinking serious Black, you're thinking in jail. But then when you get down to it, he has no longer been chained. You know, he's no longer, he has already broken free. He's already but if in fact, But in fact, it is Peter Pettigrew who breaks free of being a rat tonight. So, you know what I mean? Like when you sit here... And you're reading into it, Sirius already broke free. Sirius wasn't in chains anymore. This couldn't necessarily mean Sirius. Well, it had to be someone who was still tied to something. Well, let's go back to it. It says, The Dark Lord lies alone, blah, 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 blah. Uh, again, with his servant's aid greater and more terrible than ever before. Uh, hold on, where is it? Starts here. Abandoned as follows. Her servant has been chained these 12 years. So the, re- the reason why I'm questioning this and I'm not saying that you're wrong. Of course, it's in, it relates to Peter Pettigrew, and that's that's true. But as a reader, you could make the argument mm-hmm. that this is just as applicable to Sirius. Yeah. And it's not. She's not saying that he is chained right now. She, she says that he's been chained these past twelve years. So has Sirius been chained this year? Yes, he has been. So I th- I still think it is no, it's applicable. Agreed. I'm just saying. But it's I do love to read it in hindsight. But I do love that not only is the author using this to hedge her bets uh, against the reader, mm-hmm. um, but it goes to show you as the reader that these predictions are subject to interpretation, not only from the characters within the story, but from you as the reader, because immediately you think. Oh, Sirius Black. Like, that's that's what it's got to be. I mean, Doc Lord's coming back. Sirius Black has been in chains. Uh, and, and he's It's just back, like reading the out. horoscope in the paper. You're like, of course this has to mean XYZ event. Yes. When really every single person who was born in your birthday month can't have the same thing happen right. to them. Right, they just say, okay, that's how this applies <laughs> to me. You know? Uh, yep. So, yes, I I like what the author does by doing this. It It is, it's certainly Peter Pettigrew. Mm-hmm. But it is. It could just it's as easily be serious, and you, as the reader, 
won't recognize this until oh. it becomes. Because you're reading it so quickly and it's just like all the pieces are lining up. But what yes. you become concerned about is the fact that it's happening tonight. It's happening at midnight. Mm-hmm. Hold on to your butts. And, and it hold on. <laughs> oh, I got, I got it right here. Where is it? Come on now. Welcome hold on to, your to Jurassic Park. Thank you. Let's get to Hagrid's hut, shall we? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, Hagrid's hut. The, the whole thing with Hagrid's hut. Because we don't need to deal with Fudge. You know what I, yeah, because Fudge is, he is what he is. Yeah. Although there is, there is some great stuff here where Hermione does recognize the fact, like, listen, let's not bust Fudge's balls here because. Watch your language. Because no matter what we do, it's not going to change anything. Well, if, so we if don't anything, get, yeah. yeah, if anything, it's going to get your dad in trouble. Yeah. So let's use our brains. Which Ron has been using this whole time. Ron, who's not necessarily the most studious person, has been dedicating himself right. relentlessly to helping fight Buck Beak's trial. But what and we he have so much. But what we have discussed is that yes, I agree that he, Ron has been doing the right thing. But if you notice, his arguments as it relates to Buck Beak have been emotional arguments. It's it's been the not the the factual, uh, fact driven argument that Hermione put out recently, but ones that are just like you can't do this. It's not right. This isn't justice. Um, and Ron spurts out in anger because that's what he is meant to do as a character. As we've discussed on this podcast many a time, Ron is the emotional one. Hermione is the logical, um, the pathos and logos. The pathos, the emotional, logos being the words, and Harry is the synthesis of both. He is the one that makes it all put all together. He is the combination of both. So the fact that Ron is able to do what he does in, in spurts out against Fudge, yeah, it makes sense. Does. You're, you're looking at me like, what? Are you, just stop no. talking, Blake. Just no. stop talking. We get into the hut, bud. Huh? We get into the hut. We oh. get into the hut. Okay, the hut. <laughs> I thought you said the hot butt. I was no. like, what? We get into the hut. And Hagrid's just like pulling himself together, trying to keep it together. Buckbeak, he wants him to have like his last happy few moments. And we find Scabbers. Scabbers is freaking out. What? Now, what I don't understand, and, I, and even in my reading, I still don't get it quite necessarily. Why is Scabbers freaking out? Because Sirius Black has escaped. See, he can understand English. No, I know, but he's already heard that many a time. Yeah, except Sirius Black held a knife over Ron Weasley. Sirius Black wants to kill him. Right, but why is he t- picking this point right now to freak out? He's been freaking out since Egypt. He's been looking sick. He's been freaking out ever since he found out that Sirius Black is broken out, is on the loose. Yep. He's been freaking out. He's been not looking right. He's been lethargic. He's been hiding a ton. Now, one could argue, because you don't know any better right now, that it's because of Crookshanks, that Crookshanks came to the equation, and ever since then, he's been freaking out. That's a better argument for me. That's what it's supposed to look like in the book. But it's because he knows Sirius Black is trying to kill him. And he knows that Crookshanks is in communication with Sirius Black? He knows that Crookshank isn't his friend, at least. Yeah, sure. I don't know if he like talks with Crookshanks. I don't know if Crookshanks and he have this little like animagus language where he's like, I know what you are, man. And he's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. I'm going to get you. I'm going to go hide Hagrid's hut. Oh, no. man. Yeah, because it is interesting that Padfoot can communicate with Crookshanks. Right. Can Crookshanks communicate with Scabbers? That's that's what I'm getting. We just watched that movie uh What's the what's the one uh, Ulysses and Lola? What Flora? Flora. We just watched that Flora with our and kids. Ulysses. Flora and Ulysses with our kids on Disney Plus the other day, and like the the the, the chipmunk can understand English, but you can't it's speak. A flying squirrel. What, this sure. Very big difference, Blake. It's not a sure. What stats of the nerds? Okay, they're they're it's both little Elvin, flying Simon rats. Or theater. It's Ulysses. <laughs> so. The, the, you, you can't speak squirrel to the squirrel, but the squirrel can understand English, right? Yes. So do you, do you think, you know, Sirius is out there like squeaking like a mouse? No. Or squeaking like a... I don't... 
Sirius would be squeaking like a mouse? Yeah, he's, he's, he's squawking at uh, at Crookshanks. Do you think he talks cat? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's why he's freaking uh... out. And then they leave because Buckbeak's going to be de- beheaded. And you know what this really reminded me of? No. The, the the structure of it. I love when you ask me questions like that <laughs> nope. and I answer it. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> the structure and how everything how how it it all transpires and you're you're waiting for something to happen and it never does. This reminded me of of uh, hashtag spoilers, uh the ending with Ned Stark and Game of Thrones. Where you're just waiting. And you're, and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're hoping something's going to happen and nothing does. Nothing does. Nothing happens. Yep. And I just, I, I, I love this. It's, hold on, here it is. I gotta, I gotta read it. It says, I can't hold him. Scabbers, shut up. Everyone will hear us. The rat was squeak squealing wildly, but not loud enough to cover up the sounds drifting from Hagrid's garden. There was a jumble of indistinct male voices, a silence, and then, without warning, the unmistakable swish and thud of an axe. Hermione swayed on the spot. They did it, she whispered to Harry. I d- don't, I don't believe it. They did it. And the way that how this is led up to this. It, it scabbers is, is biting and like freaking out with Ron and, and Hagrid is telling him to get out of here and the whole mm-hmm. thing. You're waiting for something to happen in the meantime and it never does. Uh, I remember reading this, the ending with Ned Stark in the book, feeling similar in Game of Thrones and then being like, wait, did I miss something? Like, hold on. Like going back in the pages, did I... Am I That's missing how the a first page? book ends, like he's beheaded. No, it doesn't end that way, but it is the ending. Like okay. it's it's the it's the ending. Um, it's in the it's in the okay. area of the end. Um, and I, I just remember thinking, oh my god, I I, I must have missed a page. Is like, did they not print a page? Because obviously, you know, this this can't happen. Yeah, Buckbeak can't be beheaded. And yeah, yeah and the, the same thing happens here. It was funny, you know, the kids and I frequently listen to the chapter the day that we're podcasting about it. So I'll read it in the book and then I'll listen to the chapter on the ride with them. And as we're gearing up to this moment in the chapter, our little lad said to our little lass, don't worry. <laughs> They're going to say that you heard next, but it's just not a pumpkin. It's okay. <laughs> He's so cute. He really is. He is so cute. Um, well, on that note, I think we're good with this chapter. Yeah, I think so too. You got yeah. a you got a different perspective, Mavin. <sighs> Come on, girl. I know you do. Give me a moment. Just play some music. All right, fine. Holy cricket! You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are Professor Trelawney. Oh, Professor Sybil. Yeah, Sybil. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, but later today I'm going to get a headache, probably around 5 p.m., so I won't be able to make it to dinner. <laughs> that sounds like an excuse, Sibs. You obviously don't have the inner eye. However, I will say that one student, Pavardi, she, she's she got some, some talent. Yeah, I heard that she did pretty well on her test there. She's phenomenal. I've seen her future. I'm not going to say much because I don't want to, you know, make people, you know, I don't, I just... She's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. <laughs> what about Harry? I heard. I heard you had a little bit of a blip there um, with Harry. You know, I heard something happened. That you, you, he you, may be the chosen one. Uh huh. Yeah. But he's not chosen for the art of divination. Well, you know, I heard you went a little hot on Hermione over there too. Like Hermione is a good student. Why? Why are you giving her the business? Mm. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> End scene. That was good. That was not bad. <laughs> okay. That was good. I'll take that. All right. Oh. All right. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. I feel man. like I'm gonna have to like take improv classes once things open back up in life. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Except like, they'll be like, why does Mary only do Hogwarts characters? She only does Harry Potter characters. <laughs> That would be my shtick. They'll be doing like a scene from the fifties, like from like the Godfather. Yeah. Be like, oh, you'll see. 
I'm Harry freaking Potter. Oh, there he is. I'm Harry freaking Potter. Oh, oh that's Bootsky. right. Oh, okay. that's good stuff. Oh. And it was a year, two years ago, actually, uh, that I got to go see a lot of Harry Potter, a Harry Potter musical performed on stage. Yes. Darren Chris, great, great times with our dear friend, Melissa, fellow uh, Gryffindor. Hopefully one day we'll be able to do merriment like that again. <laughs> All right. For those so- of you watching us live, by the way, uh, Lumos has no problem just taking her... Making sure that she's in this the camera's way. Show. It's Lumos's show, yes. and we're all just here yes. watching it. She's, she's ready. <laughs> she needs a microphone. You need to go to uh, YouTube or MarianBlake.com and check out the live video of Lumos right now sitting <laughs> in front of our camera <laughs> for everybody Let's to see. Let's see if I can get her to look at the camera. Look over here. Look over here. Show no? everybody your nice... No, she... Blake, hey, this is this is her here. good side. This is her good side, Blake. Over here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's time for some questions. I saw that we had a couple, but let's get to them right now. Oh, Miles here. All right. So we don't have any in the email right now, but in the comments, I did see some. Remember to use a lightning bolt emoji if you would like your question asked on the podcast. All right, so Angela asks, I still don't understand why Hermione is being pushed to take all these friggin' classes <laughs> to the point that she's screwing with time. It's because Hermione asked for it. It's because she's a dork. That's why. She Only wanted dorks it. want to take that much she class. She wanted it, and she wanted to make sure she could learn all of this, and they said, where there is a will, there is a way. I just want to tell her, like, Hermione, like, just chill out, man. She just wants to soak in everything she possibly can. Like, what are we can doing? Can you blame her? Um... Yeah, I can. Like, like, what are we doing? Just take your time. Just take normal amount of classes. Ooh. You're not getting extra credit. It's not like in your in your last year you're not going to have to take any classes because you took so many in your in your junior year. That's what I did in college. Okay. I, t- I took so many classes my freshman year that my senior year I only had to take like three or four classes. I took so many classes in high school that I didn't have to do anything for senior year, and so instead I took fun classes like <laughs> bugs. Bugs. <laughs> I took a whole science class about bugs. What? The- After I took animal veterinary science. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a Sherlock Holmes class. Yep. I took bugs. I straight up did, man. He brought some in. It was <laughs> great. <laughs> Never look at a thorax the same way. <laughs> You're a bunch of little bug nerds going, mm, look at the little thorax here. Yeah. Isn't it literally special? <laughs> then I'd go to the quad and go play a guitar. Ah! <laughs> Make up songs about bugs. Some no! have six, like some have eight. Ah! <laughs> All of these bugs are really great. <laughs> I'm I'm down with Hermione. I'm down. Learn everything while you can, man. Oh my god! You and your little oboe over there singing songs about bugs. I didn't bring the oboe to the quad. Okay, it's not a quad friendly instrument. Guitars, ukuleles, (laughs) maybe a lap harp. Okay, (laughs) not a lever harp, a lap harp. Big difference. (laughs) Yes, a Sherlock Holmes class, Victoria. Oh man, I took a I took a fantastic King Arthur class. My senior year, as a I bet it was. Fact. We have oh, another good question over here. Oh, we did? Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's see. There you go, Blake. You can do this one. All right. Lily says, if Professor Trelawney had the ability to predict the events of 2020, what would her prediction be in Trelawney's Ooh, voice, of course? Yes. Mary, this is all you. Because... No, I said it's you. No, I, I can't do the voice. It's got to be yours. Well, here's the thing. Is it Professor Trelawney making a prediction when she's usually wrong? Go, Blake. 2019, <laughs> M- McGonagall walks up to Trelawney on New Year's Eve of 2019 going into 2020 and says, Sybil, <laughs> while we're here toasting with champagne. Might as well, right? Might as well. Tell me what's going to happen in 2020. 2020 is going to be phenomenal. We are going to have so much fun. Mm, how so? We're going to be out frolicking among all of the people of the world. There will be no more borders. <laughs> no more. No more flags. It's actually going to break the Guinness Book of World Record for hugging contests. <laughs> right? <We're, laughs> 
We're going to just go to the bars and drink. And just kiss everyone. Who cares about mouths? No more. Marriage won't matter anymore. (laughs) (laughs) We'll all be so overwhelmed by the community aspect of everything that we do. Yeah, that's what she would say. And toilet paper will run out for some reason. (laughs) But she got that one right, though. All right. McKenna Hines on Instagram says, Why does McGonagall think Sybil is not really able to see the future if she's the one who does all the prophecies for people as... um as it's shown in the order oh, of the okay, Phoenix. Okay, sorry. Instagram uh, well, like cuts up your words. So yeah. I'm like, we're uh, Domo arigato. Wait, wait, what do you like? Domo arigato. Okay, Mr. sure. Mr. Roboto. No? Cho Che. No, no. Domo arigato. No, Blake. For people who don't know the, the musical, they're going to think you're offensive. So stop. I'm Harry freaking Potter. <laughs> stop saying. Okay, fine. Um, why does McGonagall. Because, because Trelawney basically tells every student every year that they're going to die. She only tells Harry every year he's going to die. Well, no, but she also, like, it happens so often, McGonagall's like, okay, who's going to die this year? It's like the boy who cried wolf. She gets some of them right sometimes, but it's so rare, and she's just, like, blowing off, oh, maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe it's going to snow in the middle of June, that um, I just think she's just not reliable. And poor Sybil. Poor Sybil should just know, like, I'm not feeling it today. I don't need to make stuff up. If mm-hmm. I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. Okay, it just comes every once in a while. Sure, it's like an artist. Do you think she feels the pressure to she like does. perform? She totally does. Yeah, sure, I, I think so too. She thinks she does that crazy voice just for like the sake of it too. What crazy voice? When she actually makes the real prediction? Yeah. No, she's out. She doesn't even know she said it. She doesn't even know she just told Harry Potter that the master's going to return to the. Servant. It was freaky how that that build up was. She's like he, she stiffened up and her yeah. voice changed. Well, and everything. That, like it, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. So she doesn't talk. even remember. And they don't, it's not like they have video cameras everywhere. Uh, Caitlin asks. Do you think Harry should have told the teacher about the prophecy, Marvin? No. Why do you say that? Nobody ever believes Harry. Nobody ever believes him. Um, you might be right. What's he going to do? Like, Professor Trelawney was weird. McGonagall would be like, welcome to my life. Yeah, maybe you're right. Did she say weird stuff? Yeah. In yeah. a weird voice? Yeah. yeah. Well... Okay, Potter. Great job, Potter. Go, Go back. Get him. <laughs> Go train for next year, will yeah. you? <laughs> what did she tell you last week? That I was going to die? Yep. Okay. <laughs> really can trust that one. <laughs> and I think that's it. That is it for now. Uh, we're going to close this bad boy out. Uh, oh, sorry. I got the comment up there. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about this chapter, Marvin? No. All right, good. Let's close right, it keep out. Keep on rolling. We're going to keep on rolling this Thursday night. So two in one week. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, be if you're if you're listening to this on the podcast app right now, uh, try to be here for us and with with all the other nerds on the all all the social media platforms. Just look up Mary and Blake. We'll be there for hashtag the Potterverse. And tonight, tonight, tonight Mary, tonight, tonight, all members that join the NerdClan.com are going to get the first MCU Diaries episode for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm very excited about that. Amazing. So all right, let's close this bad boy out. Thank you all so very much for tuning in to this here episode of the Potterverse. Truly, you are being our Lumos in a time of Knox. Connecting with you about fandoms is one of the biggest blessings that has ever come into Blake in our lives. Yes. Now, if you really enjoy this contact and you want to support us, we've got three different ways you can do that. First and foremost, you can share this podcast. You can screenshot it right now, pop it in your Facebook or your Instagram stories, and tag us, Mary and Blake Media. That's a great way to let people know that this podcast exists. Yep. And if they're another Potter fan, and they can tune on in. Another thing you can do is you can head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating review, five stars. It makes me super happy, especially if you add some little words in there. They're just like little internet hugs for Blake and I, and it just makes us smile so much, but it also helps other Potter fans find this podcast. There's like a million podcasts about Harry Potter, but if you like this one and you want it to stand out and you want other people to find it, you need to write a review, particularly in Apple Podcasts. Yep, yep. It makes a huge difference. And last but not least, you can join us at Join the nerdclan.com you heard us talk all about it earlier on this episode so i won't delve into it but i do want to give a shout out if you are a member at join the nerdclan.com thank you you're the best as always you're the best that's it marvin my name is mary my name is trelawney oh, yes. mischief managed <laughs> <laughs>